we waited uh, oh, wait. we haven't finished dealing with you we haven't started dealing with you where's the salami if and my father died a long time ago he would have killed a cow and i'll bring some of the meat the man decided to die a long time ago but, how, but, you but how is me? that how so is you what? you won't kill a cow uh, kill a cow sing. Uh, if i kill a cow next year what will i kill <laughs> 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 no, I don't, I, I so don't the next year I'll kill a goat. <laughs> then the year after I'll kill it. <laughs> and then gradually, gradually. Okay. Yeah. You, want to start you, you bring the front pages. But let's thank Auntie Muni for the delicious watches Absolutely. she brought us yesterday. Absolutely. In fact, Malik, where you fail to deliver, Auntie Muni over delivered. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She did. Yes. She did. In fact, we should say Tipaya. Tepaya, Auntie mm, Muni, and you. all of your workers thank you, thank you, and all of your family members. Thanks for remembering us on this special day. Absolutely. Guys, let's take the front pages. Let me start with a good street business. Home-based career to be established by end of year. Also, farmers to benefit from te- um, Turner regime. That's new regime proposes 60% benefit to farmers. An African Tourism Leadership Forum pushes for continental evolution. On the front page of the Today, Otiko says goodbye to politics. I will sacrifice my all for peace. That's according to President Akufuado as he assures Muslims and Muhammad's boys descend on Bakbin and that campaign being led by Kofi Adams, the national organizer for the NDC. The Finder newspaper, that president story is also on the front page of the Finder newspaper, emulates sacrifices of our forebearers as president rallying Ghanaians for accelerated development. NDC NEC National Executive Committee elections scheduled for October 20. Ivoria nabbed for allegedly siphoning over 110 million from Carl Bank. Of course, Carl Bank issued a statement saying that the amount of money um, siphoned was 200 and less than 255,000 and that 130,000 of that amount had, been had actually been re- yeah. recovered. MP brokers deal between University of Education, Winneba and Efutuman and Jakura procures new co- um, compactor tracks to improve sanitation in Accra. And means. the daily guide, churches must pay tax. That's according to Reverend Frimpon Mans, who is the general superintendent of the assembly of God Church, Ghana. Muhammad's boys attack back being let's learn to sacrifice, says Nana Akufado. And NDC sabotages two billion dollar Chinese deal as it petitions the IMF and World Bank. The New Crusading Guide newspaper, Army Men on Rampage Fire AK 47, destroyed developers' wall in Kokubite, claim its military property. Also on the front page of the New Crusading Guide newspaper, Muhammad should not obey MPP and contest. That's no peace for new moon. That's Achim Kotoku landowners vowing and government remains committed to making sacrifices. Those are the stories. Here. So that story also on the front page of the Ghanaian Observer. The Nigerian economist and former minister Ngozi Okonjo Iweala comments bold Akufado over double track SHS system. Continue works of Edu Boahi and his protégés, that's Akufado, to young historians and also Otiko rejects ambassadorial job and quits and politics. Anyway, you, you remember that recently Okonjo Iweala actually launched a book uh, titled It's Dangerous to Fight Corruption yes. Yes. at which she wept. You know, I have the Daily Statesman newspaper. I will continue to make sacrifice. That story is here as well. Mahama Boys on Rampage. Uh, a Greek minister chases fertilizer smugglers. These are the stories here. Anyway, on the front laughing? page of the... <laughs> because I'm happy, I'm happy to be alive. On the front page of the <laughs> Daily Graphic, first teacher licensure exams in September. Government adopts total solution to revive railway network. That's according to Joe Garte. Expand tax nets to cover all religious bodies. Clergymen apparently are demanding. And government will promote an inclusive society. That's according to El Presidente. The Ghanaian Times newspaper saying President's story here. Let's live in peace and how money does the president talk in? Mobile money operator shot with dead days. Auditor General says, Don't blame, don't bribe auditors. Stop political party vigilantism. That's Malvi uh, bin Sali, his Amir of Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission in Ghana. Back page of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Danger looms in Upper East as Bagri Dam nears spillage levels. 70 Ghanaian students to study in China on scholarship. And finally, the Business and Financial Times. No politics in banking crisis investigation and analyst warms. A great development requires PPP approach that's according to NBC Africa. And like Raymond to say this is a story you should be interested in planting for food and jobs cash in default a greek ministry to dialogue for repayment and mps consider constituency housing scheme as new measure to cure what will i say particularly 
<laughs> I was just waiting for that question, actually. So, Malik, let's, guys, let's start with a story that I haven't seen on the front pages of the papers this morning. I haven't seen any of them. Uh, Unibank dragging the Bank of Ghana to court. But it's online and, Malik, yes, so of online. course. Yes. Um, so, uh, essentially, Unibank is reconversing some of the arguments that they have made. Essentially, about beginning from August this year, the interventions that the central bank has made as far as downgrading the um, capital adequacy ratio of the bank is concerned. They argued that in that month alone, the Bank of Ghana, men from the banking supervision department of the Bank of Ghana came to the bank, and this is Unibank, and after some purported auditing, they downgraded the capital adequacy ratio of the bank from 10.7 to 8.24, and subsequently down to 4.8, and then down, down to negative, in the negatives. And on the basis of this, on the 18th, they wrote a letter to 18th January this year. They wrote a letter to the central bank protesting these interventions and these um, these audits. And of course, they said that the Bank of Ghana replied to the letter. They were not satisfied with that. Nonetheless, we know what has happened. Eventually, the central bank came, collapsed Unibank and said the Unibank had become insolvent on the basis of some matters that had been uncovered. Now, what they are saying is that all of these downgrades that the central bank engaged in were deliberately designed to make the bank insolvent and for the outcomes to be what they have become. So what they're asking the court to do is to nullify this, the dissolution of the bank and to injunct the central bank from taking any other further steps and to restore Unibank's uh, license. You know that Unibank's license was revoked by the central bank on the basis of this. They want that license restored and the assets that the, the, the central bank has taken over to be returned to private okay. management of Unibank. I'm sure that in the course of the discussion, we will go into the details of, yeah. of their statement yeah. of claim, um, 60-something uh, paragraphs of their statement of claim. Interesting. Quite a detailed one. Quite and, a detailed and, one. We'll and, definitely and, bring and all those details. they're asking for about eight or nine reliefs from the court. I uh, will go through all of that in, Great. in the main discussion. Uh, thank you, Malik. We'll also be hearing uh, some snipers by popular request. Some listeners have been demanding or have been requesting that we bring back a playback of that interview we'd had with uh, Professor Newman Kusi yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, who mm -hmm. also was a board member of Unibank. Absolutely. And so we will definitely be bringing that to you. Anyway, let's move into an interesting issue that's coming up, this $2 billion Chinese deal. Yes, okay. So the Daily Guide is reporting that the NDC is sabotaging the $2 billion Chinese deal the ndc is claiming that they are only asking for clarification based on perceived changes in the computation of debt and arrears the reversal of tax policies and other conditions that were prior actions under the ecf program and accepted fiscal practice so we know that we have this two billion dollar um deal with sino hydro um, and what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to come and build infrastructure and then we give them bauxite um, worth that much. So what's happening is that apparently the um, finance minister said in his presentation of the media budget review, he says he categorically stated that Sino Hydro financial transaction will not add to the public Thanks. debt stock because it's merely a barter transaction and not a loan. The NDC is arguing that it is a loan actually. Um, so the whole barter thing comes in because the government of Ghana will not be involved in getting money for this infrastructure sino hydro shall be solely responsible so they will go and find the money make the agreement and then come and build the infrastructure the ndc's um presentation or whatever it is is pivoted on article 1811 to 7 and section 55 1 and 56 1 of the pmf act 2016 act 921 based okay. on that they're saying that it is a loan and therefore it is um it's not exactly so what this is the present this is a petition that they mean to the imf yeah, to for, for clarification. clarification yes in the we have seen uh, sections of that of that petition yes. and um in that petition they say that it's based on some technical and legal grounds that they want the IMF that they are arguing that this is a loan yes if you look at Article 181, sections 1 to 7, and, and section 55 and 56 of the Public Financial Management Act. 2016. Basically, they, th that is the part of the constitution which says that if government is going for a loan, they should go, for, they should go to parliament for, um, um, approval. for approval of the loan. Thank you. Now, when the finance minister himself was going to parliament to ask for approval of this agreement, 
he used Article 181 and Section 55 and 56 basis as his basis. Requesting. Exactly. So, and that part says that it is a loan that you shall take there. Mm. So, the minority is simply saying, if you have asked us to come and approve this based on the parts of the constitution asking us to approve loans, then it means you brought a loan, yeah. among other reasons. So that, that's the, so that, the, 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 the basis yes. of it. And they, they stated clearly to the IMF that we have technical and legal um, issues which make us lead us to believe that this is a loan. Yes. It's interesting, Malik. You know, there are other sections of the constitution you can rely on when you're taking an agreement to parliament. Absolutely. Article 75 is an example yeah. where for any international agreement, you would have to go to parliament to, 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 um, um, uh, for parliament to approve. And so it was really the discretion of the finance minister on advice, I'm sure, from what, the attorney what, general. What portion of the law to rely on? And they exactly. And they chose this one. So I am curious to find out why they chose this one. They were copied. So let's see. They may have to give some responses exactly. to the minority in, 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 in respect of this. Exactly. Let's move on. I can tell let's, you. Sorry. I'm sorry. I can tell you why the vice president thinks they chose this one. He says that they don't want Ghanaians to see what $2 billion can do for the nation. And really, it's as simple as that. <laughs> According to the Daily Guide. Okay. <laughs> yes. Let, let's let's deal with um, auditing, shall we? So the Auditor General, our friend, um, Domelevo, is warning heads of departments and ministries, departments and agencies to stop bribing auditors when they come to audit them. And his case is that when auditors come to audit you, when you are an auditee, it is not your responsibility to provide for accommodation, to provide money, to provide credit, to provide transportation for the auditors. It is the job of the auditor general to provide those resources for the auditors to come and do their auditing. What you have to do as an auditee is to provide all the information that is required by the auditors to do their auditing and to answer all the questions that they raise. Why do people give them money when they come? Now, he's promised that henceforth, he's going to hit hard any head of institution that gives anybody money or offers them any such money when they come to audit them. They should give them the information. Also, he says that there are heads of institutions that do not answer uh, queries within the 30 days that they are required to under the law. He says all of those heads of institution, he will hit them very hard henceforth. He also says that what they what they want to do is to engage in auditing of contracts. Daniel, you know that there have been complaints about pardon of contracts, shoddy works, people take the money, they don't do the work. He says they are not going to audit contracts. They take the bill of quantities that you submitted as a contractor and they go and check the project that you have done, whether it tallies with the bill of quantities. And I told you here on the show that once back in Sandima there was UNICEF. UNICEF gave a contract to somebody to construct a facility in a hospital. They constructed the facility. They just came, tested it and said, look, this is way below what you submitted to us in your bill of quantities. Pull it down and do it again. I will be very, very glad if this is done. I would ask Mr. Domelevo that he should check how they test the materials that are used in road construction, yes. particularly road construction. The material, like the rocks and the sand, all these are supposed to be checked. Yes. He should he should try and find a way to cross check exactly that because no, I that agree is, with that. No, it goes talking. into the quality of the output uh, that we get. Absolutely. And whilst he's at it, he should also help the banking and supervisory department of the BOG so that when they actually appoint supervisors to watch over liquidity support, they will actually oh. make sure that they are watching over the that liquidity. That is the very very. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean. Okay, you Clever. let me come back. So, you <laughs> anymore I'm coming back to you okay yeah. so we're talking about the teacher licensure I like, like that word um, and I must give Daniel credit for teaching me how to pronounce it which means that if it's wrong then it's also your fault <laughs> by the way so that's my caveat and, and doubt, learning and from KPMG is, is this morning wrong. Okay, well, there we go then. Like, so the first teacher licensure exam um, is going to start in September. September 10th to 12th, 2018. And um, it's open to all holders of diploma in basic education, bachelor of education, postgraduate diploma in education who are desirous of seeking employment with the Ghana Education Service. So the candidates um, are going to be tested on essential skills for teaching numeracy literacy. Why... Is this sudden um, licensure exams, why is it needed? Dr. Odro, who is the executive secretary of the National Teaching Council, says that it is not 
and she said this a few times, it is not to prevent people from getting employment as was being expressed by some students and friends of the colleges of education. What the examination is, is actually to ensure that there are quality teachers to teach children and raise the standards of teaching in Ghana. And it also prepares teachers to be accepted globally. She insisted and reiterated that this decision is backed by the law, the Education Act of 2018, Act 778. And so therefore it is lawful, it is necessary and they've seen it, they like it and they are going to do it. Anyway, I've taught many years. Um, I know that this is a big matter. In fact, in the 6 a.m. Do you have meeting, a licensure the, certificate? Oh, if I wrote, I would pass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that. I um, we in in the sex bulletin in Jojo Kobner's report mm -hmm. about the computer uh, teacher, the the ICT teacher. Just listen to his language, and you know that we have a crisis on our hands as far as education is concerned. Because guy who is supposed to be teaching can't even communicate well. So you would rather say, just use your mother right. tongue in teaching at the basic level. Because the English language, the guy can't communicate well. He's supposed to be teaching. No, but you know, um, in fairness, education experts advise that when a child is, is beginning to learn, That's the point she's, he, or he or she is taught use, in the L1. He should use the L1 instead of using English. Because the, la the English language he's speaking. That's not the only himself, reason why understand. we use, Eng why, why English is, is asked to be used. That's not the only So, Daniel, you can teach me about engineering, not teaching. I've done this before, so thank you. Malik has done this before. Yes, so you. stay in your lane. Yes. Wow. I think I, think I was just. I think I was just school. But yeah, Malik, upon such a statement of big manness, I think it qualifies you to buy a car. You can't be a big man like this and not buy a car. Hey, oosh. I, I can still feel what Malik just told me. Anyway. Guys, I just received a message from the Member of Parliament for Second D, lawyer Andre Japamnesa, who has a quick clarification to make about um, the Sino-Hydro deal and the questions being raised by Parliament, Parliament. by the minority in Parliament. The Sino-Hydro transaction came to Parliament under Article 1815, which deals with international business, business transactions. I have with me here Article 1815. This is actually in the petition presented to the IMF. It says, this article shall, with the necessary modification by Parliament, apply to an international business or economic transaction to which government is a party as it applies to a loan. Okay, so just like how it applies to a loan, it applies to international an international business or economic transaction. And this is one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which is what um, Lawyer Mesa is arguing copiously with me now. Um, Council, good morning. Thanks for listening. Uh, so we will move online now. And the online news review, which we've already started, is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest. Goyle Good Energy. Download the Save Doctor app now from the Google Play. Save Doctor, the future of better medical care. You've got great love for your vehicle you want the engine to last longer and perform to its maximum it's okay goyle has the new super synthetic 5w20 and 5w30 lubricants for you these specially engineered uh, superior engine oils work efficiently on all modern petrol and diesel engines they clean protect reduce fuel consumption prolong oil change intervals and enhance engine performance from startup till you switch off go to any goal filling station and grab the new goal super synthetic 5w20 and 5w30 lubes engineering innovation for your vehicle has arrived now the skill um, of course, it's coming from Goyle. Goyle, good energy. Now, the Skills Development Fund invites all micro, small and medium enterprises across the country to apply for grant support to improve the capacity of their workforce for enhanced productivity and competitiveness. Public and private training institutions are also invited to apply for support to develop innovative training content for the private sector. The application window is open till 31st August 2018. Enterprises in agribusiness and renewable energy sectors and those owned or managed by women are especially encouraged to apply. To apply, visit sdfghana.org Skills Development Fund, Skilling Ghana for sustainable development. Looking for a bank that will help you achieve your financial aspirations? Then choose Zenith Bank. We have products and service offerings that are customized specifically to meet your banking needs. Visit any Zenith Bank branch nationwide. Talk to us via our 24-hour service uh, contact center 
on 0302-680-884 or 0542-000111. Chat with us on Zchat, our live chat service on zenithbank.com.gh or contact us on our Facebook and Instagram pages for our expert advice. Achieve your aspirations with Zenith Bank because we care. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. My joy online, among other stories, has presidency not aware of Otiko's rejection of ambassador role. Less than two hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars was stolen from us, not a hundred and ten million. Carl Bank clarifies. Read that for that article for more details. Mobile money vendor shot and killed. Sad story. There are persons with hearing impairments laments neglect at public offices and hospitals. Other online stories. The BBC says Trump ex campaign chief Manafort guilty of multiple Trump uh, uh, for fraud charges. Multiple fraud charges. Bobby Wine protests. Uganda army sorry over beating journalists. And also from AfricanNews.com, Madagascar's apex court registers registers 46 candidates for presidential poll. Everybody wants to chop the president some. Yeah. We're going for the BBC News at 7 and we'll take these messages. We'll be right back. This was Kwame's Life.